Hi class, how you guys doing? All right, this is chapter nine overview. This is a lecture for our color chapter um, in our advertising design. So what I wanna do is I wanna just kind of go through, this is basically a hit list um, of the important principles and points covered in chapter nine, the chapter in our book regarding color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this hit list and I'm just gonna kind of tie things together. Uh, there's no visual aids for this. So, um, and really just kind of think about how these different principles that I'm going to mention, I'll, I'll, I'll try to give as many examples as I can, but think about how these are, are applied to advertising design and graphic design in general. Okay, so as we start with color. So color is uh, the right color choices to make your pages more appealing, more uh, attract attention and help clarify the message. I think that's a pretty much a self-explanatory um, statement. I don't think we really need to go into that much more other than to mention that color is a, is a, a fantastic way to um, make contrasts in order to make emphasis. And we've talked about emphasis. So a lot of these things I want you to think about when I'm talking about color is I want you to, to kind of how, think about how do we draw color into incorporating into the principles that we, we've been studying for the first six weeks of class. Okay, so think about that. And I'll give you some hints and I'll, I'll drop some some ideas here as we go through this, this presentation. But anyway, think about how the color choices can make or break a design ad. And I know we've all seen design ads that are, are enhanced with color or distracted from the message making and the, the clarity of the message by uh, less than harmonious colors, let's say. Okay, uh, wrong color choices can really, really throw a design into an awkward funk, um, really in, in many different ways. I, I think the main thing is that inexperience in color points to uh, unharmonious color palettes. We all know color harmony. We all know, we've all, believe it or not, all of us, even non-designers, all of us have been studying color since the day we were born. And we all are able to see, we may not be able to, to articulate how a, a series of colors or a combination of colors is harmonious, but we certainly know subconsciously that this combination of colors that we are looking at is either comfortable to look at or is uncomfortable to look at. So we all know what seems awkward and what seems clear. Now that puts a lot of pressure on a designer because you're designing for, for folks who are going to notice awkward color choices all right it might be subconscious and it might just be the viewer looking at the composition and saying this has got a very uncomfortable visual tension and they may not say to themselves well it's because of color but that uncomfortable tension is still there so color is terribly terribly important to the, the success of any composition um and, and, and the, one of the reasons why is color is so subjective um Color means different things to different people. In, in, in a, a very wide sense, there are commonalities associated with color. So for example, um, not commonalities that are cross-cultural, mind you, okay? Commonalities that are within a culture. So in Western culture, for example, the color red evokes um, anger and speed, okay? Or extreme passion, right? So we can use that in our um, designed to assist in creating message making and creating meaning. The caveat here is that in different cultures, colors have different meanings. So if you are going to be designing a piece that is going to be seen um, in multiple countries and through various cultures, um, it's a great idea to re do plenty of research to find out what colors are um, what mean in different uh, what colors mean in different cultures and also what colors are acceptable in in different cultures some cultures don't accept the use of, of uh, gratuitous color use that we use here in western countries specifically in the united states okay the, the point is is that color does evoke mood very very dramatically okay now there's different things um, we want to talk different color modes these are called color modes okay they're not called color spaces or or color spectrums they're called color modes and it's basically the way the the the, the substrate or the medium uses color okay so on computer screens or monitors there's a, a we use a, a color mode called RGB that's red, green, and blue. We get the millions of colors available on a computer screen by the monitor actually mixing different values um, and percentages of red, green, and blue to come up with a, an array of different colors. We can take that same principle and transpose that to um, uh, uh, analog printing where we're mixing inks together 
to get different colors. Okay, so in printers, printers we use what's called CMYK. The big difference here is computer screens and monitors use RGB, red, green, and blue color mode, while printers, um, anything printed uses a CMYK color mode that's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So basically what that means is that printers take different percentages of these four colors, mix them together to achieve a, 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 an array of additional colors. Okay, um, full spectrum, by the way, uh, full full color um, uh, accessibility through CMYK and RGB. Not that you would notice any differences, right? You'll be able to attain any color you really need to attain. With Now, one thing we want to talk about in printing is we also have what's called PMS colors. This is also known as spot colors or Pantone matching system colors. And that's basically a pre-mixed inks, okay? So if you would need extreme consistency in any specific design uh, campaign, let's say, for example, um, the red, the background color of red or the color of yellow that McDonald's uses in their advertising, okay? You can bet that those are called PMS colors, spot colors, or Pantone matching system colors. They're not a mix of CMYK uh, values. They're, they're, they're pre-mixed inks that the printer will use on the press to ensure that every run of every press in, in, in wherever it's printed is going to yield the exact same color red. Why? Because it's pre-mixed as opposed to allowing the system to mix colors to attain um, new colors, okay? So if you need extreme consistency, and typically we see this in logos and branding, We'll use mat uh, Pantone matching spot colors, PMS or Pantone matching system colors. Okay, um, this, I'm just going to go through this. Okay, so this is basically just kind of a, uh, a list of do's and don'ts. Okay, so let's go through these and I'll try to give you examples of each. Okay, um, use color for important text or messages. Of course, absolutely. This is, of course, called emphasis, right? Um, and as we go through these, we'll try to tie these in with the principle they're associated with. So use color for important text or messages, emphasis, right? Okay, pick appropriate colors with design topics. This could be repetition, it could be harmony. But appropriate colors with a design topic means that, okay, so if you're doing a football ad, a, a, a magazine ad for the NFL, National League football, which is an extremely violent sport, you're not going to use pastel colors that you might see for a, uh, a, a, a ballet production. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so pick colors appropriate to the, the design topic, all right? Direct attention by using bright color. Again, we're talking about emphasis and hierarchy here. Direct attention by using bright color. Why? We all know that now by this point in the class, we all know we are attracted to the page. As a focal point, we're attracted more to things that are brightly colored and things that are larger, okay? Use color consistently, guys. If you have a, a color orange, that you're using on a page and you have two different versions, let's say you have a, a, a stripe at the top of the page and a stripe at the bottom of the page, and they're close but not exact, the viewer's gonna know it. It's gonna look like a big mistake and it's gonna really shoot the designer's credibility. So make sure you're using colors consistently. Um, use a color scheme in a multi-page project. That means that if you have a brochure that's like eight pages long, you wanna make sure that you that you have your color scheme down, okay? So all of your, let's say your captions, your, your text captions are all the exact same style, exact same color. And this all points to what, guys? Consistency. All right, um, again, which leads to harmony. Okay, um, this one here is, is, this is just an example, okay? Basically what this is saying is that you use high contrast combos for distance legibility. Now you wanna be careful, you don't, remember we talked about visual vibration. You don't wanna be, use too much of contrasting colors because when you look at them together, you can, they kinda of see the letters are moving. That's called, it's a, a phenomenon, it's, a, it's an optical illusion called visual vibration and it's caused by extreme contrast, specifically as we see and uh, I remember op art um, as a historical reference. So op art used a lot of, of, of um, visual vibration in, in, in color techniques. So um, just be careful. You don't want to over, um, you don't want to over contrast letter forms in color at all. Okay. But, and then you're saying use red and yellow 
for distance legibility. That's saying just use increased contrast if you're viewing the letters at a distance. And then if you're viewing letters close, you really want to reduce that contrast. So if you have a red and if you have a yellow background with red type on it, and it's, it's a sign across the street, you're going to be able to read it just fine, right? But if it's in an ad that's right at arm's length, it's, it's going to be over contrast and it's going to create what? visual vibration. You got it. Okay. Uh, do not use, oh wait, okay. Bu 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 use light colored um, images as background elements. Why? Okay. Think about it. If we use a small image that's meant as a support image in a page, we got a whole page composition. We have one little image up here and it's really colored super brightly more so than the other images on the page. It's going to gain a precedence in hierarchy. It's going to draw attention and it's going to compromise the, the intended hierarchy of the page. Therefore, you want to use light colored images as background elements. Okay. Um, and always, always think about color of images. If you're using images for a background of an ad, you always want to make sure that that background has ample area for which to place your text. So you don't have to place text in boxes. As we have learned, placing elements in boxes is indicative of amateur and or inexperience in design. Okay, that's why I've been telling you. <laughs> that's why I've been telling you guys since week one. Don't put stuff in boxes. Okay, uh, bu -bu -bu contrast between type and color, background for legibility. Kind of talked about that up here with this yellow, red, and yellow. I uh, use two more colors. This is a really great tip. So until like I would I would say that whenever you're designing, just use a limited color palette. Just really start getting a feel for color. Um, and by all means, get out there, get your eyes out there, and look how other professional designers use. Color. And of course, I, I, three, four times a year, you should get on online and just say, you know, do a Google search of latest color trends in graphic design. Just see what's going on. Pantone puts a, a trend, a color design, uh, design color trends uh, each year. And, um, and that's also an interesting uh, as well. Very, very interesting resource as well. Okay, I uh, just want to just bring your attention at this point over to the course announcements because uh, one of the things I want you guys to study is, is, is in the course announcements, I've got these, these, these are, there's some fantastic resources in here, guys. Here's an intro to color. Okay, this site here is fantastic too. So, so back that up. This is where this uh, video came from. Then we have my intro to color, Adobe Color. Take a look at that, guys. It's pretty important. And, and that's kind of an intro. And then here's a full-blown tutorial to Adobe Color. And then over here is uh, Adobe Color new features. So in this first video, I want you to specifically know that I've given you, in this video, I've given you um, a brief introduction and tutorial to Adobe Color. And also, I take you into Adobe Illustrator and show you how you can find really amazing color pa palettes in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, guys, so that's what I have for color this week. Um, really fascinating stuff. So uh, I'm at about almost 13 minutes. I wanted to cut this short at 10, but I didn't quite make it. So I'm, I apologize for length. I just I'm trying to be as thorough as I possibly can. So at this point, I will say welcome to chapter uh, week six, chapter nine. Uh, welcome to our study of color. If you have any questions at all on color, color theory, the science behind color, or the psychology behind color, please let me know. And I'll be glad to, to make any accommodations uh, for clarification therein. Okay, guys. And of course, you know, at this point, any questions at all, please let me know. But um, all right, there you have it, guys. I'll see you guys in the special board. Thank you. Thank you very much.